Welcome to today's cloud security webinar as we discuss the five secrets for securing the cloud. Thank you for joining us today. In this webinar, we'll review the results of a recent cloud security survey and discuss key cloud security concerns and best practices for protecting cloud infrastructures and workloads. Next, I would like to welcome our panel of cloud security experts. First, I'd like to welcome Salim Hafid with BitGlass. Welcome, Salim. Hi, Holger. Great to be with you all. Thanks for joining us today. Next, I would like to welcome Anupam Sahai with Kaverin. Anupam, thank you for joining our panel today. Absolutely. It's my pleasure to be here. Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. And next, I'd like to welcome Pawan Shankar with Dome 9. Welcome, Pawan. Thank you, Holger. Excited to be here. Excellent. And my name is Holger Schulze, and uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Cybersecurity Insiders, the 400,000 member online community for cybersecurity professionals. And I'll be your moderator today. Earlier this year, the information security community on LinkedIn conducted a pretty comprehensive research study together with cybersecurity insiders and the companies represented on today's panel to you know, explore how organizations are responding to the security threats in the cloud and what tools and best practices IT cybersecurity leaders are considering in their move to the cloud. One of the first things that stood out in our survey is that you know, while adoption of cloud computing continues to, to surge, security concerns are showing no signs of abating. Actually, reversing a multi-year downward trend that we've seen before, uh, today, nine out of 10 cybersecurity professionals confirm they are concerned about cloud security. And that's up 11 percentage points from last year's cloud security survey. So quite a significant increase and, and trend reversal. So what are the biggest operational cloud security headaches? Let's start there. You know, what's keeping IT security folks up at night? And as more complex workloads move to the cloud, cybersecurity professionals are increasingly realizing the complications, right, of protecting those workloads. And the top three security challenges that companies say they are struggling with are visibility, right, into infrastructure security, uh, regulatory compliance, and setting consistent security policies across both cloud and on-premises environments. Pawan, let me ask you the first question here. The question is, why can't I just use what you know public cloud providers already offer for you know visibility, compliance, and, and setting consistent policies and configuration management? Yeah, absolutely, Holgo. That's a great question. And we hear that a lot from our customers as well. So typically, the cloud services provide constructs such as VPCs, security groups, and tools and capabilities such as AWS Config. Uh, but managing the security in the cloud at scale is really difficult, especially when you have multiple accounts and regions. Customers really need that visibility and ease of management across you know, a single pane of glass. And so a dedicated purpose-built platform that provides a visual represent representation of your infrastructure is the key here to solve that concern. The other critical item is compliance. Uh, this is not a periodic task anymore, but something that needs to be done continuously to ensure that you're meeting the strict audit regulations. And finally, uh, you really require guardrails that prevent you from creating those misconfigurations that happen too often in the cloud and catching that configuration drift. So those are the kind of the concerns and why uh, you know customers really look at beyond the public cloud solutions. That makes sense. Thank you, Pavan. Anupam, let me ask you: Why is it important, you know, to have an integrated uh, hybrid cloud security approach? Yeah, Holger, that's a great question. So, so the reality is today that uh, 80 per, 81 percent of enterprises have a combination of on premises multi-cloud and, and Docker container environments. And, and if, you, if you look at from the enterprise perspective, they have a need to have consistent policies for managing risk security and compliance across the entire infrastructure as, as the survey shows here. So for example, they want to be NIST compliant, they want to do cybersecurity framework, GDPR, et cetera, et cetera. 
So having the same policies to be consistent across their in, entire infrastructure is a very key requirement. And they want to be able to use the same approach, same solution to deal with all this different diverse hybrid infrastructure needs. They want to understand their posture. They want to manage it and maintain it. So providing a consistent integrated approach to solving the end to problem is, is a key requirement. And that's why the integrated approach is the best way to go. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you for that insight, Anupam. Now, despite the you know significant advantages offered by cloud-based security solutions, barriers to adoption you know still exist. And taking a step back for a minute, you know when it comes to business transformation and cloud adoption, three important aspects must be aligned, right? And that's probably not news to anyone in our audience. And and, and those three aspects are people, right, process, and technology. And our survey reveals that the biggest challenge organizations are facing today is not just technology, it's also people and processes. For example, staff expertise and training here at 56% ranked as the number one cloud adoption barrier in our survey, followed by you know, data privacy concerns at 41% and lack of integration with on-premises technology at 37%. Uh, Salim, let me ask you, why have organizations struggled to you know, deploy solutions to provide visibility, compliance, and, and consistent policies? Yeah, that's an interesting question, Holger. Um, you know, a lot of organizations are, are sort of undergoing this, this you know, transformation with respect to the types of solutions they're using and the, the means by which they're securing corporate data. Um, and really the struggle is rooted in, in that shift, right? The expectations now around, uh, you know, how an organization is going to go about uh, protecting corporate data, protecting corporate assets, um, aren't uh, aligned with security requirements, right? You look at uh, mobile and uh, BYOD as an example, um, and those, uh, those devices access to the cloud, right? The expectation is that they'll be able to, uh, employees will be able to access data from, from anywhere, right? That's one of the big advantages of a cloud application like, uh, like an Office 365 or a G Suite, right? Is that an employee can, uh, from an unmanaged uh, uh, asset, um, access corporate data and work more flexibly. Um, so really the struggle there is, uh, is that, uh, you know, with respect to visibility and compliance and consistent policies, a lot of the tools uh, that are in place now, um, you know, provide either protection for, for a single application, right, sort of this native, um, native security built into an application like Office 365. So there's a lack of cross-application visibility and control uh, to uh, Anupam's uh, earlier comment. Uh, you know, that's absolutely a, a problem for a lot of organizations. Um, and then compliance is a big one, right? How do you achieve compliance where um, a lot of the sort of traditional models around security where data is uh, in a controlled environment on premises uh, no longer holds true, right? Now the data is flowing to new devices and new applications where uh, organizations don't control the infrastructure or, or the application itself anymore. Uh, you know, what is IT's responsibility, right? And so the struggle, I think, is rooted in that shift from uh, infrastructure and application security to data security and how do you protect data uh, in, in sort of this new um, cloud-focused environment where, uh, where control is, uh, is, is more on the data side as opposed to the application side. That's exactly right. Thank you, Salim. Next, we asked our survey audience about the biggest threats right, to cloud security and uh, misconfiguration of cloud platforms uh, jumped to the number one spot in this year's survey as the single biggest threat to cloud security here at 62%. This is followed by uh, unauthorized access through misuse of you know, employee credentials and insecure interfaces and APIs. Um, Pavan, let me ask you, how has the threat landscape changed in the public cloud? Yes, so for many of you who have been on the hardware on-prem world like myself, I think that this problem will definitely resonate where the traditional network security tools really don't work in the cloud, right? We've seen a lot of times customers really using the lift and shift approach of using 
these existing tools that were originally built for the data center and assuming that they will work for securing their public cloud. But securing the cloud is fundamentally different, right? The cloud perimeter is fluid, where a simple security group misconfiguration can ex expose your servers to a possible breach. And we have seen these, you know, as many uh, instances in the news with S3 bucket exposures, uh, which really correlate to poor network security hygiene and, you know, ultimately give a false sense of security. Additionally, the built-in cloud tools, as they continue to scale, uh, such services such as Lambda Functions, RDS, ELBs, cannot be secured by agent-based tool. And really to maintain you know, complete security in the cloud over these services that are native, uh, you need to use an agentless solution that integrates with the cloud provider's API, which allows for consistent security coverage as the built-in tools continue to grow. Thank you, Pavan. Now, one of the perennial topics, if you will, right, in our annual cloud survey, is the question about the risk of security breaches in public cloud environments compared to traditional IT environments. And organizations continue to believe, you know, that public clouds are at higher risks of security breaches compared to traditional on-premises environments. And um, that, by the way, is a significant eight percentage point increase relative to last year's uh, findings, you know, further supporting the perception that the use of public clouds increases the probability of becoming a target of a cyber attack. And uh, at the same time, interestingly enough, perceptions of SaaS application security, you know, they contradict this previous finding a little bit. Here, a majority of 57% do believe that cloud apps are at least as secure or more secure than on-premises applications. Anupam, on this topic, let me ask you, how do you deal uh, with breaches in hybrid cloud environments, you know, as, as both are susceptible? Yeah, that's an interesting question, um, Holger. So, you know, whether it's on-premises or cloud environments, both have their own share of risk, security, and compliance challenges. And, and to deal with the breaches involves first understanding and assessing your current posture. Where do you stand today as an enterprise from a risk security compliance perspective. And once you understand your posture, you understand what is missing, and, and then you take steps to remediate the open issues that are found so that you are proactive about preventing breaches. And the breaches could be because of configuration issues, as, as you discussed early. It could be because of any vulnerabilities that are found or it could be because you, you haven't met the audit requirements from a security perspective. So whatever it is, you have to take steps to fix the open issues that are found and, and then do continuous monitoring to ensure that your target golden posture is maintained. So having a combination of these mechanisms is, is key because I, 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 keep, uh, I say that, that there's no one single bullet for security. And so you have to use a combination of mechanisms, and that includes making sure that you're able to handle breaches, predict breaches, and handle breaches so that you minimize the, minimize the frequency of occurrence. Thank you, Anupam. Now, as more workloads uh, move into the cloud, right, organizations are faced with unique security challenges that are presented by cloud adoption. I think, uh, Salim, you touched on this a minute ago. You know, traditional network security tools, you know, they made sense when organizations, uh, servers, databases, applications, you know, when they were located in a static, centralized data center. But these, these legacy security tools, right, are not designed for the dynamic, uh, distributed, and, and virtualized environments of the cloud. Therefore, it's not surprising that only 16% of organizations in our survey report that you know the capabilities of traditional security tools are uh, sufficient right so only 16 percent say it's sufficient to manage security across the cloud and, and that is a six percentage point drop from a previous survey on the other side a whopping 84 percent say that traditional security solutions either don't work at all in cloud environments or have only very limited functionality uh, on this topic, Salim, let me ask you, where do traditional tools uh, fall short um, you know, with respect to their functionality? 
Oh, I think, you know, there are many, many ways in which they fall short. And the 84% here that, um, you know, that, that, that see that those traditional tools aren't working for their cloud environments and cloud workloads um, really speaks to, to some of these security gaps. You, know, you think about some of the threats facing um, facing corporate data, the risks and the gaps in security. You think of things like um, like data protection, right? The data itself, where is it going? Who's accessing that data? Um, you think of threats, things like cloud malware, uh, and you think of uh, you know who's accessing the data, right? I- the identity piece a little bit. So you know, with respect to uh, uh, threat protection, for example, and uh, and the threat of malware. You know, a traditional tool would be something like uh, uh, an endpoint remediation tool of some sort, right? Um, but that doesn't help you in a cloud environment where data is being uploaded from, uh, you know, uncontrolled endpoints, and that data could be, uh, you know, malicious data of some sort. Uh, you know, uh, an Excel spreadsheet with a with a you know with a macro with some uh, malware uh, embedded there, right? And, and that kind of a threat um, uploaded to the cloud needs to be prevented. Um, you know, in a way that uh, that works for the cloud, right? As opposed to endpoint uh, protection, you need something that's going to detect something on upload to the cloud, detect malware at rest in the cloud. Um, on the data protection side, things like access controls and data loss prevention, you know, these are things that you had on uh, sort of traditional uh, premises-based versions of these tools, really critical tools, um, but that don't work for a cloud environment, right? They um, Oftentimes the policies don't match up exactly with what you might have an Office 365, and then there may not be integration between your premises-based uh, uh, you know, DLP solution, for example, and your uh, cloud application, right? So that's where a lot of these third-party security solutions, um, like Cloud Access Security Brokers is one example, uh, it kind of come in to fill that gap. Then you have the identity piece, obviously. Um, a lot of the, um, you know, the best practices around all of these things, really, identity, data protection, and threat protection, um, all the best practices on premises should all apply to the cloud, right? You want to have comprehensive data protection, you want to have effective threat protection, and you want to have, um, uh, you know, identity management that can really prevent unauthorized access to your data. And, um, and and you need tools that are going to be able to scale with your organization as you deploy more new applications. You want something that's going to be able to uh, integrate with anything that you choose to deploy, whether it's a public cloud application like an Office 365 or so maybe some private cloud application, um, you know, built on built on AWS or your own uh, managed data center or what have you, right? So, um, so really interesting here to see that that so many people are aware of this uh, gap with respect to traditional security, um, and uh, and a lot of of folks clearly in the IT space are um, are looking to solutions that they can use to uh, to, to solve some of these problems and, and fill some of these gaps. Exactly. Thank you, Salim. And on the same topic, uh, Pavan, let me ask you, uh, what problems, you know, will I face if I use traditional network security tools in the cloud? Uh, You know, what sorts of use cases are not being met by traditional approaches or tool sets? Yeah, absolutely. So as more companies are starting to adopt cloud first strategy, the cloud is really becoming an alluring target for these hackers. Like we previously mentioned, you know, the perimeter is really fluid. So any changes inside your security groups are not going to be detected by an edge firewall, right? So what that really means is that the IAM is really your new perimeter. And this plays a big role in securing your cloud and should, be, should really be considered as your new firewall perimeter, right? IAM typically requires extra protection against attacks such as, you know, browser-based attacks, hijacking. So a two-factor authentication or MFA is typically not enough. And organizations should really be taking advantage of the data analytics to not only discover possible attack vectors, but to build, to kind of build in proactive measures to block potential future attacks. You know, and especially now with the cloud, we see these ephemeral services like Lambda functions and more data sources such as VPC full logs, CloudTrail. Uh, there's a lot of potential to correlate and generate insights for a new take on you know, intrusion detection services. And that's kind of seen in recent headlines. We see a lot more attacks that are automated including DDoS, subdomain takeovers, ransomwares, where misconfigurations or vulnerabilities are a potential way to launch an attack. Right? And the window to find and respond to these exposures has gone down. So really combining threat intelligence with you know, continuous compliance and auto remediation has become a necessity to secure your public cloud infrastructure. 
Thank you, Pavan. Now, as we discussed, right, organizations recognize several key advantages of deploying cloud-based security solutions. And a trend that really has been building over the last couple of years that we've been uh, conducting the survey, it's that respondents selected, you know, faster time to deployment, uh, along with cost savings as the primary factors for selecting cloud-based security solutions. And uh, I guess that is in addition to, um, and I think Salim, you mentioned that earlier, number one primary factor obviously is the effectiveness of protection, right? On that note, uh, Anupam, let me ask you, what are the challenges that you see with having, you know, multiple solutions for multiple infrastructures, you know, such as the hybrid environments like cloud on-premises, and let's throw DevOps into the mix. Yeah, absolutely, um, Holger. I think that's a key challenge that enterprises face today. That um, and if you have multiple tools, that one for managing your on 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 premises environment, another tool for managing your cloud, and third one for managing DevOps. You you're faced with the challenges that you see here. You want one tool which is faster to deploy, and and you're obviously saving the cost by having one tool instead of three different tools. You're talking about total cost of ownership from a manageability perspective. All those are key drivers from a from an enterprise perspective. And besides, you know, enterprises are looking for consistent policies to manage their entire hybrid infrastructure. Yeah, the concerns remain the same, which is how do I get visibility? How do I manage data security? And how do I be compliant with compliance policies? And that's for the entire organizations. These requirements don't change whether you're dealing with on-prem resources, cloud resources, or DevOps resources. So that's why it's important to have a single unified approach that allows you to discover, assess, and manage your hybrid cloud with a single pane glass, uh, unified pane, uh, glass pane view. And that's a key, key requirement there. And talking about requirements, let's drill a little deeper. You know, as, as organizations adopt the cloud, many recognize the need to partner, right, with, with security solution providers for robust protection capabilities that are not already available in-house. And the top five attributes that we found that cybersecurity professionals um, are looking for in a cloud security solution include that first security tools, you know, ideally need to be cloud native and designed for the cloud. That's followed by cost effectiveness. Uh, then seamless integration, right, with cloud platforms, ease of deployment, and uh, demonstrated cloud knowledge. So that's the, the vendor expertise, right, that comes into play here. And all of these are ranked by at least 50% of survey participants. So they're all ranking very high. Mm, Salim, let me ask you, are these cloud security criteria, are they reflected in the solutions that are available on the market today? Yeah, great question, Holger. Yeah, absolutely, they are. And you know, we can just go through each of these. You look at, at the top uh, uh, criterion here, uh, these, the, the fact that security tools are cloud native. A lot of um, cloud security tools are, are built on the cloud, right, so that they are scalable. Um, and, and that's really important, right? So a solution that's, um, that's built on a platform like AWS, for example, or Azure, or, or even Google Cloud Platform, right, you have uh, a solution that can scale as you deploy more applications, as you onboard more users, um, you know, instead of sort of the traditional, uh, if you think of, uh, uh, you know, next-gen firewalls or some of these other security appliances, for example, um, you know, scaling up can be can be very cumbersome, right? Actually sticking a box in, um, in every, uh, um, I guess, location that you have, and, uh, you know, very involved process there, right? So, so a cloud-native solution, very important. Um, and no surprise that a lot of cloud security vendors are deploying in the cloud to provide that uh, that cloud data protection. When you look at cost effectiveness, 64% um, of respondents in our survey, whole girl, looks like uh, really important to a lot of folks. And um, no surprise there, right? So obviously, um, you know, to, uh, cloud offers a lot of cost savings, uh, and you want to continue that with respect to security, right? You don't want to uh, invest a lot in your um, uh, cloud applications and uh, and having a cloud infrastructure in place, and then uh, you know have to spend an inordinate amount of money um, on uh, on the, on securing those applications and securing cloud data, right? So um, so having a solution in place that uh, that is cost effective uh, on a per user basis 
you know, one where where you can uh, have a recurring expense, uh, sort of a SaaS model, as opposed to um, you know paying for regular uh, new versions of a piece of software or a new box uh, every time you, you 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 know you want current security. Um, that's where cost effectiveness can come in, and that a lot of uh, cloud security providers have taken advantage of. Uh, integrate seamlessly with cloud platforms very important to folks. And obviously, if you want a cloud security solution, you need a solution that's going to work with your cloud applications, right? So, um, no surprise there. And then ease of deployment. This is a really important one. A lot of solutions out there, you know, require a lot of uh, you know, cumbersome installation processes. Um, you know, physical access to endpoints so that you can install some sort of agent on the device um, so that when it accesses a cloud application, you uh, you have secure access to that application. Um, you know, requires a lot of, uh, uh, you know, sort of custom work uh, with respect to each application that an organization wants to secure. You know, an Office 365 or a G Suite or a Salesforce, you know, these are really popular applications. Um, so no surprise that a lot of cloud security vendors are going to have solutions for those apps you know, for your AWS environment and so on and so forth. Um, but in a lot of industries, you have a lot of private cloud applications. You have a lot of sort of some of this long tail of SaaS applications, right? If you think about in the healthcare space, a lot of these uh, EHR platforms uh, in, in financial services, some custom apps for, uh, for, for managing, um, you know, client data. Uh, and, and sort of this long tail of SaaS applications, the thousands and thousands of applications that aren't these major SaaS applications with, you know, uh, readily available APIs and integration with all the major security platforms, deploying uh, a security solutions for a uh, security solution for all of those applications is a real challenge, and, and ease of deployment there especially uh, is is absolutely critical, and so that's something that a lot of um, you know, security vendors are, are working on, right, is uh, this idea of, you know, how do I provide a seamless experience for the end user to uh, to access these cloud applications in a secure way and for uh, IT to deploy a security solution in a way uh, that, uh, you know, that protects all corporate data across all applications um, without any custom work required for every individual application that you that you may want to secure as you scale up. Thank you, Celine. Great overview. Now, let's recap what we learned right over the last 30 minutes or so in terms of you know, the best practices for cloud security. Here on the screen are, are five secrets, five best practices for securing the cloud. I think we touched on almost all of them, but uh, let me ask our panel about your recommendations for securing the cloud. And uh, Salim, let's start with you, Salim at BitClass. What are your recommendations? Well, number one here is, is uh, I think the you know one that really stands out, right? Using a cloud native, agentless, cloud agnostic platform. And this is you know to, to to my point a minute ago, right? Having something that's easy to deploy, absolutely critical because uh, you know the more involved it is, uh, the more you know sort of agents and profilers and certificates and uh, you know cumbersome installation type processes required. To deploy a security solution really are, are barriers to that uh, security solution really being used effectively um, and, and being deployed widely. Um, so a cloud native agentless cloud agnostic platform, you know, we're, we at Big Glass are we're a cloud access security broker, so you know, really a space that's growing pretty rapidly. And that really, um, I think, gets at, at, at this point, right, is if you're looking for a platform to secure your data, you know, you want something that's going to work across all your cloud applications, that's going to be easy to deploy. And uh, and a lot of solutions, you know, they don't prioritize the deployment piece. They don't prioritize um, uh, the agentless piece uh, in many cases, right? That notion of if, you, if you're an employee trying to come in and access a cloud application from an unmanaged endpoint, um, you know, do you want to allow unmitigated, uncontrolled access uh, to that cloud application from that endpoint? Probably not. You want to have some controls around that data. You want to protect that data in some way. You still want to enable employees to access cloud data, you know, the way they want. You want to take advantage of the flexibility of the cloud. You want to take advantage of um, mobile data access enabled by cloud, uh, so on and so forth, right? So, um, so enabling BYOD um, while securing cloud data and deploying it in a, in a, in a seamless manner that uh, that, is, that isn't too uh, cumbersome that doesn't uh, you know put too much load on on your IT team and that is scalable um, as you as you deploy more applications you know, really important and uh, and something that a lot of folks are 
uh, are really eager to, to, to jump on these days. Excellent. Thank you, Salim. Um, Anupam at Kaverin, let me ask you, what's your recommendation? What are your best practices uh, that you would want to share with our audience? Sure. So, so the first step is that you want to assess and, and understand your cyber posture. How good or bad is your cyber posture and how amenable or how, uh, how easy is it to, to, for, for a cyber attacker to, to breach you? And, and then risk mitigation is, is the key to success. And, and there needs to be a combination of mechanisms to solve the risk security compliance uh, posture management problem. And unfortunately, there's uh, no silver bullet or one, one trick uh, that you can use to solve it. So the, the result is that you need to have a combination of what um, Kevin calls protect, monitor, and respond mechanisms and it needs to be automated so that you, you start with protection, you take care of configuration issues, vulnerability management issues, take care of your control framework requirements, and then you get into continuous monitoring mode to make sure that there are no security anomalies. And as issues are identified, you want to be able to fix it as you go along so that you're able to maintain your golden posture. And, and this solution, uh, the Kevin solution is infrastructure agnostic, it's, it solves the hybrid cloud solution problem, it's agentless, and, and addresses the, the hybrid cloud security needs. Very good, thank you, Anupam. Um, Pavan at uh, Dome 9, what is your recommendation, what are your best practices that you'd wanna? Yes, absolutely. So like our esteemed panel here, they have touched on really good points around cloud native and micro-segmentation architecture, which uh, understandably are very important. I also think there are two other key critical items. Uh, the third one on compliance, continuous compliance. And why I say that is because applying security controls to ensure nothing is broken in a dynamic cloud environment can be really hard via traditional methods. Compliance at scale is no longer checking off boxes on a checklist or doing a you know a periodic review for a snapshot in time. This is that is outdated as soon as the review is complete. Right. So an automated and a continuous uh, compliance solution is a must-have to ensure strict regulatory requirements and remove the need for manual human intervention. Now, on that topic, enterprises also need the ability to translate policies into concrete checks that model their organizational requirements. So the ability to re really create custom rules in a simple and intuitive manner really eliminates the need to write hundreds of lines of code for your specific you know, best practice policy. Uh, the other item that I think is also very important is, the, is number four around threat intelligence tools. What we've seen today is cyber threats have become more frequent, harder to detect, and more complex. The longer a threat actor remains under the radar in the network, the more damage and cost it is to an organization. And it's really difficult for executives and IT managers to know exactly when there's a threat uh, and can they find that vulnerability. So threat actors only need to find you know, an avenue to exploit, so organizations really need to be well prepared to combat against these threats and using uh, threat intelligence tools for real-time intrusion detection and to protect against future attacks is also a very critical step to secure the public cloud. Excellent, thank you, Pavan. Now let's you know uh, take a look at some of the live audience questions that are coming in from our webinar audience. And Salim, this first question um, is for you. And the question is, where do native security solutions fall short in providing adequate uh, visibility and control? Salim? Yeah, you look at an application like um, at Office 365, you know, a great, great, great security um, platform in Office 365, um, but it's focused on Office 365, right? And that's the problem with each of these um, native tools built into each cloud application. It's off, Microsoft is going to focus on Office 365. Google is going to focus on Google. Box is going to focus on Box. And... Um, you know, and, and these applications don't live in a vacuum, right? There are many applications being deployed all the time and data flowing to multiple applications um, in an organization. So um, so really where they fall short is that cross-application uh, security piece, right? Cross-application control, cross-application visibility. Um, uh, with respect to cross-application control, you know, things like uh, parity, uh, across applications of security policies, right? And a uniform set of security policies that are pretty easy to control. Um, you take, in, for example, in, 
in, say, a healthcare organization, right? A new regulation, which happens pretty frequently in, in a heavily regulated industry like that, new regulation comes into effect and you need to maybe uh, add a few more policies with respect to who can access what data, um, you know, what are the patterns you're looking for with respect to, to health records or health, uh, protected health information. Um, and, uh, and if you rely solely on native security tools, um, one, it's going to be a, a real headache for, for IT folks, right? Because they're going to go into each application, have to modify the security tool or the security options for each application, add those data patterns in or import those data patterns to each application and, and set up policies that way. Um, and, and that can be a real headache, not just because it's cumbersome, but also because not all applications support the same, uh, you know, manner of adding patterns or the same you know, set of security options, right? You think of things like access controls, some applications have more granular controls in place um, as options than other applications, right? Obviously, Office 365 is going to do a great job of that. Uh, but another uh, application like, uh, uh, you know, some of these private cloud applications or these long tail SaaS applications, maybe a new file sharing app that's not a box or Dropbox, for example, uh, won't have those sorts of granular controls in place, right? And so you're going to be um, non-compliant there. And then you have the visibility piece, right? Visibility across applications is, is absolutely critical and something that, um, you know, that some cloud platforms have tried to address, um, but haven't been too successful at doing, right? You look at Microsoft with their um, CAS, uh, which is uh, sort of their, their cloud security platform there. Uh, and uh, and they do support some API-based integration with some other applications, but visibility is really limited there. Um, and uh, so really what organizations need with respect to visibility and control is visibility and control across all applications that works in a similar way. You want to know who's accessing that application, what data are they downloading or uploading to a particular application, um, you know, what risky activities are maybe taking place across all your cloud environments. Uh, and that kind of visibility can be really advantageous if you think of um, say a risky login, for example, an unauthorized login or compromised credentials. And say someone logs into uh, Office 365 uh, from San Francisco, and then a few minutes later logs into an application like Salesforce uh, from New York City, right? That kind of uh, uh, activity, uh, obviously anomalous, something is wrong there, right? One of, the, one of those is an unauthorized login. And if you only have visibility into one application, only into Office 365 or only into Salesforce, uh, those two activities together don't, you know, independently don't mean anything to you. But, uh, uh, but together, uh, you can see that maybe there's a compromised credential there, maybe there's unauthorized access there, and you can um, take some action right there uh, if you are aware of anomalous activity. So that's really... Um, where these applications fall short with respect to native security is cross-application uh, visibility and control. Excellent. Thank you, Salim. That was very uh, comprehensive. Um, Anna Pam, let me ask you the next uh, audience question. And question is, how do you deal with securing integrated DevOps and cloud security environments? You know, most enterprises have this requirement. Anna Pam? Sure. Holger, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a key uh, requirement and a key use case that we see a number of um, customers asking for today. So, securing DevOps is 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 a big challenge, and and that's because the agility and the speed that DevOps uh, teams are are undergoing today and the transformation that they're undergoing today, and and the fear is that they by injecting security it's perceived that it will slow it down. So the key is to have one solution that deals with DevOps-related security issues. In other words, it enables DevSecOps and also deals with uh, cloud security or hybrid cloud environments. And we've heard things like that the CSO, the, the CISO and the head of don't DevOps, uh, and, and DevOps don't have the same vocabulary. And, and so there's a need to have a unified tool and, and that's where a solution like Cameron would come in and provide an integrated solution for managing risk security and compliance for the enterprise, including for DevOps environments where we are able to provide a, a CI CD pipeline integration to deal with how the developer moves code from development to QA to operations. And Cameron allows you to 
to inject security by providing control gates in each of these stages without slowing you down, besides dealing with the cloud migration and, and the compliance management related use cases. Excellent. Thank you, Anna Pam. We have time for one more uh, audience question. And uh, Pawan, this one is for you. The question is, how can cloud security providers address multi-cloud visibility? Yeah, absolutely. So visibility, uh, by definition, is challenging in the public cloud, especially when you're managing multiple accounts associated with the same cloud you know, provider. But when you factor in multi-vendor scenarios, any mix of AWS, Azure, or GCP, that process really becomes impossible to manage. Right? So en enterprises really need a single view to clearly understand the full state of their infrastructure in order to get complete context. And we at Dome 9, we are also an agentless, fully API-driven solution and we're cloud agnostic. And because of that, we can synthesize policy attributes from multiple providers and accounts into one management plane and to give you the inventory and asset management view of your entire environment. Along with that, you know, we visualize your cloud security at the infrastructure level using a dedicated purpose-built platform that allows you to interactively identify any sort of configuration drift, assess impact of new vulnerabilities, spot firewall misconfigurations quickly, all of that. And uh, along with that, we can analyze the posture of any instance from multiple lenses. So your security policies, your IAM policies, your guard duty findings to really give you a you know, holistic understanding of your multi-cloud uh, infrastructure. Excellent. Thank you, Pavan. All right. Uh, it looks like we're at the finish line for today's session. Now, as we're closing this webinar, I would like to thank everybody in our audience for joining us. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. Also, many thanks to our panelists, Salim, Anupam, and Pavan. Uh, thank you for sharing your insights regarding securing the cloud. This concludes today's session. I hope we will see all of you again at one of our future webinars. Thanks, everyone.